So if you really enjoyed the entertainment Tuesday night, that's the way you like to spend your evenings in prime time, uh, you're going to just have to go back and watch the replay because Donald Trump says he's not doing it again. The presidential debate that happened earlier this week, the first one between Harris and Trump, will apparently be the last. During a rally yesterday, Trump said that there will be no second debate between the two. He said, uh, he put it this way, he said that when a prize fighter wins a championship bout, of course the loser wants a rematch. Essentially saying that Harris was the loser, he was the champion, and therefore there's no reason for him to fight again. He is right that that's how it always happens in prize fighting, you know, yeah. in, in boxing, the loser is always the one who says, you know, I'm rematch. ready for uh, yeah. a rematch. Um, so he's he's got that part right. Look, I, I don't think another debate is necessary, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, from, you know, some of the feedback that we've gotten, if you're a Trump supporter, you're going to remain a Trump supporter. If you're a Harris supporter, you're going to remain a Harris supporter. If you're an undecided voter, who the hell knows? Uh, I mean, maybe the debate helped. Maybe it didn't. Uh, you know, we'll have to see. I would say in a couple of days, we'll have maybe a better idea of whether or not the numbers moved at all. The initial uh, post-debate polling, and there's not a lot of it just yet, but it looks like might might see a slight bump for Harris, which is what I thought we might see coming out of that debate. But uh, I just don't know that another one is necessary. I am interested in the vice presidential debate. Oh, yeah, that's going to be interesting because yeah. they have such like quirky personalities that I'm They're very so different. Cur- yeah, well, and the whole like the weird thing, the childless cat lady. Yeah, thing, like, it's going to be I think it's going to be entertaining. Yeah. And, and the one thing that Trump also said that he is right about is that people are pretty much they're going to be voting by the time they would have another debate. So, you know, with the early mm. voting and all of that, people are casting their ballots. Uh, so I, I don't I don't think we need another one. What I would like to see, and I mentioned this yesterday, uh, I think Trump just goes and, and does what Trump does. I think he does his rallies. He does, you know, his interviews and all of that um, again, because I don't think this election is about him anymore. I think everybody's got their mind made up about Trump. And uh, it's really all about how people view Vice President Kamala Harris. I think for her, what I would like to see. Uh, I'd like to see her do uh, an interview on Fox News. And I think uh, she should sit down like Fox News Sunday with Shannon Bream. Uh, she'll get some tough questions, but you know, nothing so intimidating. Uh, and maybe she'll get asked some of the stuff that, you know, we still want answers to uh, that she hasn't been asked yet or that she hasn't uh, been held to account on up to this point. Uh, I think she needs to do a town hall. Uh, that honestly, if they were to do another debate, that's the kind of debate I would like to see. So with an audience with with. Yeah. And usually I don't like but with an audience asking questions, because the one thing I like about that compared to your typical debate is that even if the questions are basically what you would get from moderators, there's still that personal interaction that has to happen between the candidate and the voter. And it's, I think it's, it's just really a whole different dynamic than yeah, seeing them with moderators. Exactly. I would like to see something like that, that I would be interested in. All right. Yeah. I'm in favor of one more debate. It's yeah. gotta be a town hall debate though. <laughs> okay. Phil, Phil Donahue's gone. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> you, you know what I'm tired of? I'm done with these focus groups with so-called undecided. Yeah, voters. you're right. I mean, how many times are these interviewers going to get burned on CNN talking to somebody who said, Oh yeah, actually I'm a Trump supporter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. Yeah. There are so few undecided voters out there. And I think we're at the point now where these focus groups, people are wise to what's going oh, on. Oh, of and course. And they just lie their way on there. They do. And and you know what I notice about these focus groups? When you listen to them, they sound like they're trying to be pundits on TV. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. They've got you their know? hot takes. Yeah, yeah. They want to sound smart. They want to look good on TV. So you're not getting an honest take from no. them. Uh, you're right about that. Yeah, totally uh, enough focus. of the focus groups. So Boeing workers are picketing outside the company's plants in Washington state early this morning after voting overwhelmingly to go on strike. Tens of thousands of machinists voted to reject a proposed deal between the company and the union that would have boosted pay and benefits, even as it fell short of some other demands. Ninety six percent of members of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers voted in favor of the strike. So this is a, another setback for Boeing. Boeing just can't catch a break. Yeah, it's just been one problem yeah. after another, and now nobody's there to make the planes. Yeah, their planes are falling apart. They got astronauts stuck up in outer <laughs> space. Now they got workers striking. What a disaster. <laughs> yeah, total mess. Thank <laughs> God. You know, it's amazing, too, because at one point, Boeing was sort of like the uh, 
the uh, gold top standard. of the class, yeah. the gold standard mm -hmm. of, of manufacturing in this country. And now it's been just one problem after another. And, uh, you know, this is a big one because yeah. you saw how, how much money uh, General Motors and those other companies lost with strikes. Now they're dealing with it. So we'll see, uh, you know, who gives in in the end. Well, we also saw a bit of a disruption to uh, the airline industry when those planes, those Boeing planes had to be inspected. And then yeah. the orders got delayed uh, because of all of that. So if Or this, even canceled. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have our... Uh, our aviation expert, Jay Ratliff, on with us on uh, Monday, and I can't wait to talk to him about all of this and get his take. All right, what else is going on this morning, Chris? Well, we had a Dolphins game, yeah. and it wasn't a good one. Dolphins no. quarterback Tua Tagovailoa suffering another concussion in the 31-10 to defeat mm. to the visiting Buffalo Bills. Another head injury for a player who has expressed concern yeah. about his history of having concussions. That really is the headline. I mean, they lost uh, the game, but what they might have lost in the process is even more important. This is his third major concussion. He he dove forward, and it was actually DeMar Hamlin, uh, mm -hmm. the Buffalo Bills safety, who, remember the— Yeah, he had the heart issue. Yeah, he had the, yeah. The, the, went to cardiac arrest on the field during a, a Monday night football game. He was the one who—he he didn't mean to, but he was the one who leveled the hit— uh, that led to the concussion, but three concussions now, and there are a lot of people calling for uh, Tua to, to retire. Uh, yeah, at how this can point. you go back and keep doing that to yourself? And just the video yeah. of him just holding his head when he when he hit it, yeah, that's awful. So unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So you hope that uh, he's going to be okay. We'll see. You know what decision he makes. This is not one of those decisions you want to make the next day. I think you you know he's got to recover and then think you want to think about it some. Um but Yeah, I mean he did walk off the field. Yeah. Which, you know, he's is concussion prone now though. I mean it's right. obvious. Uh yeah. and how you know the long term effects. Uh I mean we've seen the stories from other players how much of a risk do you want to put yourself at to continue to play? And then obviously this is secondary to that, but the Dolphins, there's so much excitement and hope for them for the season. Now, I picked them to lose the game last night. Look, uh, they I think they've lost, I don't know, 12 of 13 uh, to the Bills. Th they do not play the Bills well, uh, so I just I didn't see them winning that game. But I did think the Dolphins were going to be a playoff team, and uh, looking at their schedule, they'd have a really good chance to have a great season. Now, without Tua, uh, you don't know how long he's going to be out, if he's going to come back at all. A lot of questions Thursday now. games are tough, though. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. that mean, turnaround. It, yeah, the turnaround, and it just seems like more players get injured. Yeah, on the Thursday night games. The now, only benefit for the Dolphins in, in having that happen on a Thursday night game, they got a little bit more time before the next game now to figure out the quarterback situation and get things settled there. But yeah, rough night for Miami. So the Buccaneers are looking for payback time mm -hmm. because they have an interesting game against Detroit. It was the Lions that knocked the Buccaneers out of the playoffs last year, and uh, they're going to go up to Ford Field. And try and get some revenge. And they're going to uh, lose. So the Bucks are going to lose. All <laughs> yeah. right, I'm keeping track yep. here. I'm keeping I'm, track. Man, I'm three and zero. I'm what three and zero. I know. I know. Look, I, I when I make these picks, I'm just telling you what I think is going to happen, not what I'm rooting for. I mean, I'd love for the Bucks to win and for me to be wrong. So you uh, thought Detroit looked that good in Week One? I don't know. No, but uh, and the Bucks looked better. The Bucks were playing a pretty uh, a crappy team, um, and the Lions. I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, look, it is on the road. So the that Lions. Makes it tough. They're not going to go seventeen and zero, so they're going to lose some games. Would I be shocked if they lost to the Bucks? No, but I'm not picking the Bucks in this one. Again, doesn't mean I don't think the Bucks are going to have a really good season. Uh, but I gotta. I got to give you my straight up take here. Okay. Uh, I got All a record. Right. You've, you've, yeah, you've been doing well so yeah, far. Got a so record. let's see. Uh, yeah, you're, I mean, you're no homer. I mean, no, you're, you're, no. You're, you're the realistic guy. I know. Guy. I know. What about you? You picked the Dolphins and Tyreek to score two touchdowns. He had zero. I did. And I'm going to pick the Bucks to win this one. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, Mike Evans, what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, three touchdowns. Three to, whoa. So wait, Chris, so Chris going all out. Bucks, Chris says Bucks win and, yeah. and Evans scores three touchdowns. Yeah. All right. Wow. All right. Yeah, I'm totally serious. <laughs> <laughs> going out on the limb there. Chris Trankman with today's top stories. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you.